we have 100 days to be Anaki Ascended. We have to tame some awesome creatures, defeat some cool bosses, and kill the final boss. Can we do it? Who knows? Let's find out. We start off with a day number one on the island map with a new overhaul mod, Anaki Ascended. So we're going to give this a go, see what we can do, and obviously as we start off, we start off getting ourselves a pickaxe, using a pickaxe to get some flint, make ourselves a hatchet, and use the hatchet to get some wood. We find a little dodo friend down here, and uh, I knocked him out with the spear. I don't know, but we tamed him up, and then I found a turtle to make into a porcupine. So I've done that and we got ourselves some needed hide. We got some fibre and some hide and we eventually made ourselves some cloth armour. We then went exploring a little bit and we actually found our first tame, the Golden Turkey. This would come into play a lot later on. I then saw a little dodo on fire, I mean it was a pretty big dodo, but uh, I thought why not I try and boulder it and knock it out. And uh, this Prime Alpha Dodo absolutely destroyed me. Rip, rip to me. I then decided that the beach was a very, a very dangerous place. So I put down a foundation, a storage box on a boat and headed all the way over to Herbivore Island. Hopefully a little bit safer place. I made myself a smithy and got myself a absolute crap ton of metal from all different metal rocks. I made a metal pickaxe and went all the way over to the Lower South Cave to grab some crystal. We we're going to need this to be able to make the spyglass, so that's exactly what I did. I ended up making a awesome spyglass. This would basically allow us to see all the health and different stats of every single creature in the game. Once we finally had enough resources, we could finally make the Anaki workbench. This was basically going to allow us to make all the different items and a load of different crafting materials for the Anaki mod. I went back over to Herbivore Island and uh, yeah, there wasn't a very friendly visitor there. Yes, you are seeing that correct. That is a dragon. I quickly left Herbivore Island and went to the other side of the map and decided to build a base in the top left of the island map. So I moved everything over from the boat, all our different materials and everything like that, and got to work on building a tiny little base. However, first, we were probably going to have to get some resources. And to do that, we was going to have to knock out a parasol. So we knocked out uh, this little red parasol here. Also, there was a pterodon that landed right next to me, so I took the opportunity to knock that out as well. I don't know. After the pterodon had finally tamed up, I went over to the crafting bench and made ourselves a nice little pterodon saddle. We made a flax set to go with it, and hopefully this will stop us from getting eaten instantly, but uh, I highly doubt it. We'll see. I put on our flax set, just like so. Look how sick we look. Come on, come on. I know we just look like an every art character ever looks like, but we look cool. Definitely. I had a feeling that we was going to die a lot in this playthrough, so... I wanted to go get a second pterodon to eventually have baby pterodons and have an unlimited amount. However, when I went back to the base, there was a prime alpha dodo just sitting at our base with 310,000 health. However, he seemed to be pretty chill and pretty friendly, so I just let him be. Pretty handy, to be honest. This didn't kill us, but eventually our pterodon had tamed up and it was level 868. On the way back, I saw there was an alpha dodo just sitting here and it only had 10k health. So I took this opportunity to try and kill it and see what we got from it. It looks like we got some alpha tokens, some alpha hide and some alpha blood, which will all come in useful very soon. After killing a million penguins, yes you did just see that, I, I wiped out the whole penguin population, we mounted ourselves some SES cryopods. So this were basically better versions of the cryopods and yeah, that's pretty much all it is. I put them in a little ball. That's pretty good to be honest. I then went over to get some silica pearls from the snow biome and on the way back I got attacked by a poison drake. This was one of the third tier creatures, I believe it is. One of the badass creatures. 
and I'm not ready for this. It does a crazy, crazy amount of torpor every time it attacks, so I tried to head into the forest to get rid of it. Look how much torpor my pterodon was on. I was literally nearly about to get knocked out. Luckily though, I managed to hide in the forest and thank god it left me alone and I didn't lead it all the way back to our base because that would have been very very bad. Some more resource gathering and I found that there was a beaver dam. Now this beaver dam was being protected by a badass beaver. Literally what it's called. A badass beaver. And uh, it was pretty dangerous. If I got hit by this beaver I was 100% dying but the resources were worth it so... You know, I left the beaver dam, but it was fine. There was a badass mountain beaver, but eventually we could head back and make the fabricator. So I placed the fabricator down in our little base right here. And then I put down a few crop plots as we was probably going to need some crops in the recipes later on. From Scorched Earth, there is a shovel now, so I use our shovel to get faster growth speed in the crops. I don't I don't really understand this, but uh, it worked, so I done it. We, we don't question it. And I went to gather some more resources by getting some rocks. And on the way back, uh, there was some deadly creature just killing everything that I had. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I pretty much lost everything. Luckily though, the raptor, this prime alpha raptor, seemed to not really care about my pterodon, luckily, and I didn't, I didn't really know what to do. So I decided that I would try and lead him off the cliff and just throw him into the ocean. That was the best I could pretty much do at this moment. But uh, we kind of had to restart and yeah. So after that eventful thing, I decided I was going to build a million different gates. So that's exactly what I did. I would bolster our defenses by putting down a absolute crap ton of behemoth gates. After a hell of a lot of grinding, this literally took me like a whole day of playing art, but you know, we got some behemoth gates and our base was pretty much protected unless something that was flying could probably get in, but we wouldn't worry about that right now. A generator and a fridge was next, and then I expanded the base a tiny little bit. It wasn't really a base, it was just some foundation, but I called it a base anyway. I then went exploring and found myself an alpha karcher. This thing had 73,000 health. And it was an alpha version, so I guess it done a crap ton more damage and was a lot, lot faster. How sick does that thing look? The country was pretty fast and uh, it could fly. <laughs> I was actually stunned in this moment and I still don't know what happened. But I went back, I put some air conditioners down, and we could finally start hatching some dinos. So we hatched our pterodons just so we could have some backups in case our ones died. Now we had everything in the base game sorted, we could finally start working on some Anaki Ascended stuff. First we had to try and kill this golden turkey, however to my surprise it does a stupid amount of damage. Yeah, so uh, round one didn't go very well, but after like four or five tries, I managed to get a golden turkey trapped in this little gate here. Uh, they was always spawn at 600 by the way, so uh, yeah. I spent like half an hour just shooting this with a bow and arrow to finally get some golden treats. Golden treats are the key ingredient that we would actually need to be able to tame our first Anaki Ascended creature. So we can actually go back to base and make our Anaki workbench and this was going to be able to make all the different kinds of treats and all the different, different types of treats for all different tiers in the Anaki Ascended mod. We would need to go and hunt down some badass pterodons. These could be frost, fire, poison, anything, but we basically needed these badass tokens to be able to make some badass treats of our own. This would allow us to obviously get our badass tier of creature, 
So we made a poison tree and went and found the highest level poison pteranon that I could find, which was a level 380, and proceeded to knock it out exactly how you would any other creature. We fed it the poison treat and got a sedative elixir. This would basically make its food drop a incredible, incredible, incredible amount. And we had our first badass poison creature. After getting one badass poison pterodon, I decided it's probably best if we get a second one just so if it dies, it doesn't really matter. So I used our pterodon to knock out the other poison pterodon and it done a absolute crap ton of torpor. It was great. It was great being able to knock stuff out just with a pterodon. So we knocked out the badass poison pterodon of the other gender and we fed it the sedative elixir and the badass treat and we had a second poison pterodon. I would let the poison creatures uh, obviously breed up and we could finally get a poison egg and hatch it for a imprinted version of the poison pterodon. Look how cool that egg looks by the way. Obviously this would get gobbled up by our SCS and we could literally just have it imprinted growing up in the terminal. I then went out and decided we needed some resources to be able to make a frost treat and there was a frost rex down the beach so yeah. I decided I was going to try and go knock it out, um, it didn't really go to plan, apparently it could stun you off the tame and it wouldn't let me back on and sadly our pterodon got absolutely munched. Then eventually so did we. <laughs> Didn't really go to plan at all. After flying back on a new pterodon, I finally got it up to pretty much knocking out Torpor. One more hit and eventually knocked out our badass Frost Tyrannosaurus Rex, which is going to be really, really OP for us. So we put our Frost Tree in and a sedative elixir and there we go, we had our badass Frost T-Rex. Obviously, if we tamed the Rex, I obviously had to try it out, so I made the Rex saddle and look how much damage it done. 2,000 damage. It was craziness. It was so much more damage than our Poison Pteranon, and it actually does a Frost debuff, which basically slows the target and reduces their health over a certain amount of time, which is pretty handy. So having this Rex, we was going to be able to take down a bunch of other creatures, like maybe even some Prime Alphas, Alphas, and obviously the Golden Turkeys and Dodos would be so much easier to take down now. After taking down the Golden Turkeys, obviously we had a bunch of levels to put in our Rex, and we could actually need to get it to 200k health. 200k! Our Pterodon had like 10. <laughs> I went back to base and made ourselves the chemistry bench, a industrial cooker and a few other things and this was going to be able to make us the health elixirs. These would come in handy later on but this was basically a health potion which would just go and last for 10 seconds and heal up your creature a crazy crazy amount. I made a second frost tree and decided it's probably the best idea if we go and get another T-Rex. However, this one didn't really go to plan either. Um, yeah, apparently the normal Rexes can knock you off the Pterodon as well. And for some reason it just wouldn't go in the, the ball. So uh, yeah, that was the second Pterodon, which uh, got munched to death. Listen, I'm not a good Ark parent, okay? Just, we just have to accept this fact. And then I swiftly got munched as well. <laughs> Uh. However, to my surprise when I came back, it was actually knocked out. I guess I must have done enough torpor to it. So we throw a frost treat in there, a sedative elixir, and boom, we had ourselves a second Tyrannosaurus Rex. I spent a little bit of time just breeding up our little uh, Rexes here, and we had an imprinted one, and then we got to like 7,000 damage, which is pretty good. After killing a few things, I actually came across a primitive alpha chest piece which basically gave you damage resistance, health, and a weight reduction, which was pretty crazy. Our stats got increased an insane amount just from that chest piece. It was really, really cool. 
But now we had everything we needed to be able to make the second type of tree, alpha trees. This was basically going to allow us to get some alpha creatures. I decided the best alpha creature I could find, the highest level one, was this alpha mammoth. So I gave it my best shot and used our pterodon to knock it out. I eventually put our sedative elixir in and the alpha treat. I did have to go back home for a second alpha treat, but we tamed ourselves an 749 alpha mammoth. Obviously, as I did the T-Rexes, I made the alpha mammoth saddle and wanted to go test it out. Now, all the alpha creatures do a uh, massive alpha bleed to any creature that you hit. However, this turned out to be not the best creature. Yeah. Honestly, just 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 don't question it. I I I don't. It died. <laughs> it died in front of my eyes. Um Yeah. After that painful death, I decided I would go and explore a little bit, and I came across this guy, Nasher Warden of the Beach, and he had 100 million health. I'm guessing this was a later on boss dino, so I decided to leave it be and uh, not go anywhere near it. I eventually came across this guy, an Alpha Karchar, just like the one that we saw earlier. I decided I would go see how much torpor our Pterodon actually did to it, so I decided to bite it a few times. And we've done about 600 to 700 torpor per bite, but it did do a 10 second torpor. Like the torpor kept going up even after I didn't hit it. So I kind of decided this was going to be my next creature I was going to tame. So I had a few arrows on me. I decided I was going to get off my pterodon for some reason. And uh, this was one of the most scariest experiences I've ever had in my life. An alpha can't chart just absolutely staring at me. I just, I didn't move. I just kept shooting it <laughs> at this point. But eventually, eventually, we got it all the way up to its torpor and I knocked it out. We was about to have an alpha karcher. So I put in our alpha treats, just like so, once I can actually get to the body, and we could have ourselves a alpha karcher. Once I cried him up, I headed back to base and made the Alpha Karcher a saddle. And we could put it on our cart chart. Now this guy was a game changer. Literally the most broken thing I'd ever used in any art playthrough ever. This It was so quick and it attacked so, so fast. Obviously, Karchers are pretty OP anyway. But this Alpha Karcher was insane. Compared to the Rex and everything else we had, this was beyond insane. Obviously, you could get 100 stacks, and I actually got 100 stacks by just killing a little dodo. I oh, we went around killing a few things, a little Apex Raptor head, and we actually got some apprenticed leggings, which was pretty cool. So I put those on, and that was actually our second piece of the Alpha set, which was pretty cool. I even then went on the hunt for some Apex creatures, which was crazy. We was already going up crazy, crazy tiers, and Apex creatures got absolutely destroyed by this thing. So I went round, killed some Apex Raptors, some Apex Carnos, and some Apex Rexes. And the loot I was getting was insane. We could even eventually try and kill some uber creatures, as this was going to get us some uber hide, which was going to be needed later on to make a bunch of different saddles. So this dodo rex here got absolutely obliterated. Just absolutely obliterated. It was insane. I couldn't believe how much damage this karcher was actually doing, and we were just melting through anything that I was coming across. As I was flying back home, I came across a primal dragon with 6 million health. It looked terrifying and I didn't really want to go any closer to it. However, I decided, you know what, screw it. I would go and try and fight it on my karcher. So that's exactly what I did. We was actually doing a 
a decent amount of damage we were taking a lot of damage as well um, but the bleed was doing a crazy crazy amount of damage to this primal dragon and we needed to kill this thing to be able to eventually get our own uber creatures of the Dodorex, the dragon, the broodmother or the Megapithecus so yeah However, something that I didn't realise is when I was taking damage, it actually increased the rage meter on this creature. And if I took too much damage too quickly, it would knock me off and I was probably going to get shredded. So it took a little while. We was actually doing a decent chunk of damage, just biting it every so often. But uh, I quickly found out that uh, it was pretty easy to enrage me and I got eaten by my own alpha gotcha. <laughs> It didn't really work out too well. We were probably going to need some more resource generation, so I decided to make the Anaki Forge, and this was basically going to allow us to smelt metal a absolute crap ton faster. I think it's like 25 times faster or something like that. It's insane. I decided to go round two with the Alpha Karcher. I bred up another Karcher and increased the saddle, and um, yeah. This didn't really go to plan either and I got shredded again. I decided it was probably the best idea to go down a different route, so I went and tamed a Alpha Rex. I put down the uh, sedative into him and the Alpha Treats, and we had ourselves a low level Alpha Rex. I leveled up the Alpha Rex a, a tiny little bit, and uh, it was time to go and destroy this Primal Dragon. This time we would have it. Obviously we wouldn't do anywhere near as much damage, but we were probably going to be able to take a crap ton more damage, so it's probably a better trade-off. I was basically just going to sit here and just bleed the Primal Dragon to death. Every 10 seconds, well every time we bite it does a 10 second bleed effect, so it was pretty handy and I could just sit here and use health potions and eventually try and kill the Primal Dragon. So I found a perfect little ledge where I could basically hit him as he flew past me and I literally just sat here for like 20 minutes just biting him as he went past. <laughs> it wasn't the most interesting fight ever but it was pretty cool and I had to make sure that I stayed on top of my potions and didn't let my health get too low. However eventually the bleeding effect uh, finally managed to take him out. There we go, we had finally killed our first primal creature, our primal dragon. Now the reason we wanted to kill this is this would actually drop an item called an insignia. This insignia here would allow us to actually tame our first uber creature which was really cool. After killing the primal dragon I had a bit more you know, you know, just energy in me so I decided I was going to go and try and fight the broodmother. And uh, this quickly turned out to be a mistake, as me and my Rex got absolutely shredded instantly. I don't know why. I then gave it a second go with a brand new Alpha T-Rex, and um, yeah. The same thing happened again. I don't know what was going on with this, but uh, I, got, I, I got instantly shredded. And then as I was flying back, just to make things worse, I... Um, got killed by dragon. After dying a million different times to a million different creatures I went out and tamed a poison drake and made a saddle for him. I decided just to skip this bit because we had better things to tame. The poison drake wasn't the next tier up but we was going to use this to go and try and tame a uber creature. Now we could actually tame the a dragon creature and it would actually use the dragon insignia thing that we got when we killed the primal dragon so yeah trying to hit this thing was a bit of a pain but eventually I could have a sky battle with it and start dealing some torpors with it after a, a very 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 long time of hitting this thing in the sky I managed to eventually knock out this level 340 a dragon I put the sedative in his inventory, used it and put the insignia in and we tamed up our level 510 uber dragon creature which was really really cool. And to start off 
just base health, he had 300,000 health, which was insane. 300,000! Just to start with, it's incredible. Look how much damage we was able to do with this creature. We was hitting for like 30k, this was actually nearly more than a Karcher was doing. And obviously we could fly. Now every time we bite, we was actually doing a chunk of their health, which was actually pretty cool, and we could actually heal from biting the creatures as well. I then decided that we would go and try and see how our uber creature, you know, went up against some primal creatures. So we went and hunted down this primal dragon, obviously it had 6 million health, and this one went a lot, lot quicker than the rex one did. So we was able to burn him down pretty, pretty quickly. Obviously he did do a crap ton of damage to me, so I had to make sure I was still using my health potions every now and then. But eventually we managed to get him down to a low, low amount of health, which was pretty good. And we could finally murder our next primal dragon, which was really, really cool. And we got a load of experience for it. I decided the best idea was to get a mating pair of dragons, so I went back out on our poison drink and knocked out this level 460 dragon just to breed up and obviously get our dragon imprinted. So we managed to knock him out, I put in our sedative and our next insignia and we had ourselves a second dragon, level 690. I bred up a new dragon which was now imprinted and I decided it was time to go and fight our first warden. So we decided to face Nashua Warden of the Beach, the first turtle boss. All the wardens have top hats on, I don't know, I thought that was a pretty cool addition and they hit like an absolute truck and do a bunch of different debuffs. So I had to make sure I had enough healing potions on me and eventually I could just flame this guy down and just try and kill it as fast as I could. However, he did have 100 million health, so it was pretty challenging. I eventually managed to get it down to about 50 million health. This did take quite a while, but the health potions I just about was getting down to about maybe 300,000 health before I had to re-pop my health potions, so it was pretty dangerous at times, but we eventually managed to nearly take out Nasha, the Warden of the Beach. So he had 1.5 million health left, and we just let him burn to an absolute crisp. And boom! We unlocked a load of different tech engrams, and we got a few different things we would need to progress further on. Next up was Eureka, Warden of the Swamps. Now, this was the massive frog version of the wall. So this was pretty simple, this one didn't do as much damage and for some reason it didn't do torpor which was pretty lucky as I wasn't really prepared for that. But eventually we could take down Eureka too and that was our second warden down. But you see every time we killed a warden we was going to get some warden tokens and a bunch of different essence of that warden and a few different loot to go with it. So we was basically just farming those tokens and we had to kill 8 different wardens. So next up was Perdition, the warden of the plains which was basically a massive rhino. This one attacked really really fast however it didn't really seem to have as much defence as the other ones so we was able to burn it down pretty quickly. We finally got him down to about 2 million health, and we had nearly killed Perdition at Warden of the Plains. There we go, we killed him. So this would give us some tokens, some more loot, and we apparently got this cool looking hat, an Apprentice Warden cap, which was pretty cool. So I decided to chuck it on, and we could look at our brand new little outfit we've got going here. The Warden stuff is so, so cool, and I really like that they've done it. I don't know, they don't really need to add in armor, but it was really cool. And obviously the buffs it gives you are insane. So next up was a Smaug, Warden of the Grasslands. This was basically a massive Dodicarus and it had quite a bit of defences. Uh, this one obviously took a little bit longer to burn down, but uh, yeah, it wasn't really that difficult. This one didn't do as much damage as the other ones. It just had a crap ton more defence. 
we managed to get it down to about 17 million health and it was going down pretty well. There were some points where I did get a little bit low because I was just getting just slacking with my healing potions but eventually we managed to take down the smell the warden of the grasslands and we got a few more tech engrams to go with it which is pretty cool next up was nilok the warden of the sky this one was basically a massive rg however i made a awful awful noise so i kind of just won't show much of this one I basically just burned it down and we was able to take out and it looked pretty, pretty easily. It made an awful noise that one. But next up we had the Kokonos, Warden of the Rivers, which was basically a massive, massive poison crocodile. This one didn't do Torpor either, which was quite lucky. I don't know if the Wardens could actually do Torpor, but we managed to take it out too. Next up was Bokuto, Warden of the Snow, which was basically a red Megapithecus and we destroyed that one as well. Second to last we had Rolim, I may have butchering that name, but this was the Giga one. Now this one done a different buff compared to the other ones and done a crazy crazy amount more damage. I had to make sure the health potions were supplied in force on this one. It was pretty insane. I don't know what the, it was like an extra 30 or 20% more damage. It would just randomly pop off at some point so I had to be ready to use the health potions and heal as much as I could and just spam them as much as possible for this one. However, eventually I did manage to survive as long as I could and take him down as well. Last but certainly not least is the ocean, which is Mo Mo Mao Mo? <laughs> I don't know how to say these names, but it was basically the Musasaur. Now, to my surprise, it's um, it could fly, it could come out the water and it didn't really need to be in the water anyway. Uh, yeah, but I managed to kill it and it wasn't actually that difficult. We finally got our warden armor and I thought this actually looks pretty, pretty cool. However, we needed to go and kill a bunch of primals for their insignias to finally make the matrix eventually. And this was gonna allow us to tame the massive last creature that we could technically tame to eventually defeat the war chief the final boss so i went round killing the megapithecus the broodmother the broodmother was pretty tricky it done a lot of damage compared to like all the other ones i don't know why but the broodmother was pretty tricky and eventually we could kill the dodo rex as well there we go so we killed some primals and we had everything we needed to finally try and tame this guy primordius the celestial now this was the end game creature to fight the war chief with however we needed to first kill it and get one of its essence so yeah we just basically had to murder it it was pretty tricky he did do a decent amount of health but nothing compared to like the primals was it was pretty easy to murder him So eventually we managed to kill him and we got ourselves the essence that we needed, the Primordius essence. And now we was able to make the Dragon Matrix to get one of the Celestials self. So we could actually go and tame the guy that we just killed, Primordius, and have a Primordius to fight the final boss in the game with. So Primordius was actually a passive tame. It was pretty easy. I just ran up to it and he wanted to be my friend. This took a absolute crap ton of material. So we had to kill all those bosses, all the primals and everything to be able to make this matrix. So hopefully this Primordius Celestial is very much worth it. This, uh, this Primordius guy is uh, pretty OP. <laughs> His breath attack literally just nukes everything around and it does 200k damage per hit. 200,000 damage! It's ridiculous. And he looks so so cool as well. So there's a few different Celestials you can get but this is Primordius. And we went back to base and he actually had his, his own armour as well. So I made it up and put it on Primordius. 
our Celestial. So we needed a few things to be able to make the War Chief Summon, so I collected all those and made the War Chief Summon the final boss of Anaki Ascended. It was time to try and fight the final boss, so I said screw it and let's just give it a go. So Primordius has nearly 200 million health and does a stupid, stupid amount of damage. Yeah. Well, that didn't go to plan. Promonius got absolutely smoked. And I don't know why. He just got absolutely obliterated. Now it's time for round two. Promodius vs. the War Chief. Now, this time I had imprinted Primordius and I had a better saddle that I had upgraded and this time it seemed to go a lot better. I was actually doing a percentage of damage, although it was slow, I was actually doing about maybe 4,000 to 500,000 damage a second, which wasn't too bad. I just had to make sure to stay on top of my potions and yeah, I was actually doing a decent chunk of damage. It was slowly, slowly going there, but then again, there was a few different dragons and stuff that I had to kill along the way. He did do a crap ton of damage at times, I had to make sure that my potions were always ready to go. And eventually, he got stuck. I don't know what happened, but he got stuck and I was able to take him out pretty easily. So, we had managed to defeat the War Chief of Arc, the final, final boss of Arc. Ended. It was a really fun mod, and if you want to see any more or any other overhaul mods, then uh, be sure to let me know in the comments. But uh, other than that, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace, guys. Bye.